Hi guys and ladies, welcome back to the podcast. My name is Disama Matieti. We are on episode number 11 and today we're going to be talking about understanding the different type of data structures, which is quite important uh, for people that are beginning in analysis just as a beginner's guide. Understanding data analysis will totally blow you away and I do assure you that at the end of this podcast, there will be one or two things that you would not have known about data structures. In order to do that, stay tuned and we will continue just after our theme song. quite amazing how if we learn how computers learn uh, store data we get to become better at interacting with computers i say this because previously i used to think that hard drives or hdds are the only place where data gets stored but it was only later on when i actually did my honors that i understood that oh data gets stored in different forms and knowing um, what where how your data gets stored it actually makes it easier for you to understand your analysis. And this is why I'm thinking that um, in 2023, it is quite important. Knowing data structures should be one of the most important things that we could do as analysts. And hence why I'm starting this conversation at the beginning of our podcast. So there are different uh, ways of data structure, five different types that I will elaborate a little bit later just to give you a list. The first ones are variables. Second ones are data tables. Tables are quite um, familiar. Everybody else is talking about tables, tables, tables. The third one is something called a list. As the name goes, it's just a list. And um, the fourth one is what we call the key value pairs. Something quite interesting. And the last one, which is my favorite, is the hash tables. So the hash tables, I never understood until later on in computer forensics that I really started to understand hash tables. It's something when you're looking at the hash table, oof, you don't even know what you are reading there but it is important for you to have the hash table. So I know this sounds a little bit goofy, but like I said, at the end of this episode, I assure you that you'll be blown away by what I've prepared you here. And let me not just waste time. Let's dive right straight into it. So first question is, what is a variable? So if we're starting, a variable is like, think of it as the building block for data manipulation. Um, I, I call... Um, than building blocks because they represent like um, a storage location that that holds value for data. Um, think of it this way. I don't know if you still remember the um, Omo game, the telephone game, where you would say one thing to one person and to another and to another and to another. At the end of the cycle, we start to recall what did the other person say. So in order for you to pass data around, you declare something at the, when you start uh, programming something called a variable, and then you assign data into it. You can assign data immediately as it starts with the first speaker to say, here's the telephone game. Um, the word is silence. Or you can declare the word, um, the variable later into your code. Maybe when it gets to speaker number seven, only then do they say, actually the keyword is silence. But it's all up to you. A variable doesn't store data onto the hard drive, but it just passes data throughout as you are using your your program or your own um, uh, coding that you are working in. Variables are quite important, especially when you need data in the flash. So you can actually come around, declare certain variables to make sure that a user can have 
a unified experience throughout the whole experience. The nicest, uh, easiest way to understand this one is when you have a website with logging in details, you would put um, logging details or user username as a variable so that every time when you refresh to say, what did you last buy? You can always use variables, variable, variable. You always go back to that variable so that you can say, oh, hang on a second, our user never use, uh, never bought kitchenware. They always bought shoes. So the last buy will be a look, um, something that has to do with shoes. So that's what variables are there for. Hence why I call them the building blocks to say, before you start to commit data or save it permanently, you can start by putting it as variables. And if you know how to manipulate and use variables, I think you'll be in a good position with your analysis. Second one that is quite more important is data table. So question that we might be asking ourselves is why are data tables common? So data tables are also known as data sets. You'll hear a lot of people talking about data sets, data sets, and they are structured uh, where to store data or organize data. So the same way as you hear me talking about tables, structured, tables, structured, you can just hear that that we're no longer talking about a flash drive or a RAM or temporary storage. We're not talking to permanent storage, which is hard drives or solid states or cloud, whatever the case is. Now you're dealing with permanent storage. That's where tables are coming in handy. Um, it consists of rows and columns when you're talking about a table because there's a, there's a column and there are rows into it. And it's more like uh, if you you are new into tables it's more like opening up when you open up an excel spreadsheet what you're seeing there it's actually more like how data gets stored in a table you would have your columns on the top and you have your rows uh, just on the bottom going all the way to infinite amount of rows and infinite amount of columns the only thing that can stop you in tables is you know your space if you don't run out of space then that's the only thing else that stops you. I'm not going to go into how does data get stored in tables and how does it exponentialize, you know, how, you know, adding one column could actually make whatever double. I'm not even going to go into that side, but this is quite important that, and they're quite um, well-known tables. Um, the data tables provide a tabular format that allows for efficient data manipulation filtering sorting and analysis like i said if you have opened up excel workbooks before you would understand um, what i'm talking about the other popular one is google sheets if you open up google sheet you would understand what it looks like and more or less if you understand that you would understand how data gets stored into sql it's exactly like um, a google sheet or an excel workbook but now stored not just a million rows but stored like many millions of rows it all depends on how much space do you have to query that data okay the third one that we're going to be talking about is called list so the like the name suggests this list um but now the question that we might be asking ourselves is are list synonymous with tables the answer is no lists are not the same as tables so a list is the same as when you do your shopping list you just put one thing after another and you just do one um, list. A list um, in, in so way we can call it an ordered collection of elements or items. Uh, unlike data tables, uh, lists are typically one dimensional, meaning that you don't have many columns. You just have one column and many uh, rows or many entries going all the way down. Uh, for example, a list uh, of, of, of names or a list of um mixed data types so you can you can just have it a, a list like that this is like looking um at only one table of your excel uh, workbook or your google sheet you just take out all the other rows and then you just left with one why would i choose to use a list instead of a table because i mean it's quite common that you can think if it looks like a table why can't i just do a table but I just use one row so it's because lists are flexible and allow for dynamic resizing 
uh, making them suitable for scenarios where the number of elements may change over time. Um, this will be if you are going around and you're saying we're going to be creating our forecasting and we're going to be looking for the following variables or our forecasting versions is going to be uh, Q0, it's going to be Q2, it's going to be Q3, and you're going to have a three year plan or the one that's called Q4. And then later on, you decide, you know what, I want guys, I want just want you guys to do two um, budgeting cycles. It's going to be Q0 and three year plan. And then you collapse the two, a list will help you instead of a table. You just collapse these two. And then now the two budgeting scenarios that will be available going forward will only be Q0 and three year planning, not everything. So that's that's how list becomes quite, um, you know, quite useful. Um, and and when I first started in analysis, I used to, I often used list to perform um, iterative operations and to store data sequentially, which is which is quite important. The fourth one that we're going to be looking at here is called arrays. So um, you might be asking yourself, what is an array? What is an array of data? So an array, like the name suggests, is something that has to do with data being uh, stored in some sequence somehow. So arrays are like lists um, as they also store collection of elements or variables. So it is like a list. It's like a list. Remember, a list is one column going down. An array is like one row um, going to infinite columns. So if it's one column to infinite uh, rows, it's, it's a list. If it's one uh, row going into infinite columns, it's called an array. However, arrays have a fixed size, unlike um, unlike lists. Remember, lists have got unlimited rows uh, going down, uh, unlimited rows. The, the arrays has got limited. Um, you just tell it to say, I want you to have uh, five columns. And then you have five columns, and then you have one row. It goes to five columns. Um, and then that's how you, you stop. And then once an array is done, then you can create um, another instance where you're storing things into an array. A simple uh, example, let's go back to our shopping list. A an array that we might be getting, let's say for instance, we're getting five things. First thing would be um, a user person. Um, second thing, another thing could be, what did you, another thing could be, what did you last buy? Another a variable could be, what are you likely to buy next? And another variable could be probably, um, how you like to be addressed or where do you stay. So if you have those five variables fixed, every time you log in, um, the computer or our software will populate those five variables. And then that, because it's not just one variable, it's five of them in one go. That is called an array. So you'll say one is called variable one, will be username, variable two will be preference, variable three, four, five, six. So every time when you do your coding, you don't always have to call the contents, the array content or the variable content. You just need to give each um, variable its name, variable one, two, three, four, five. So you'll say variable one dot name or variable one dot text is equals to whatever and then pull whatever SQL data that you that you want to do. So it's it's a nice part about it. They have fixed, they are not dynamic in size and they hold elements of the same data type. So you cannot mix and match data types. Arrays, when it's one data type, they, they hold that same data type. If you don't understand the data types, we did another podcast about data types. You can feel comfortable going back to episode number nine just to learn a little bit about what are different data types. Okay. Arrays are widely used in data analysis and programming languages to store large volumes of similar data. I used um, to use arrays to store answers to questions which uh, will be saved when you complete the questionnaire is another way of using it. Say you have the questionnaire, you store all those five, 17 questions that you're keeping out, more like a Google um, essay or a Google Sheet or Microsoft uh, questionnaire. All those things are stored in an array 
only when you press submit, then it commits it into a, a table. But as soon as, as, as it's still staying there where it is, it's just an array. And then it gets gets committed later into the hard drive. So as it, it, it allows for data to be stored in temporary storage, which is the RAM or the flash drive, whatever it want to do, before it gets committed into the hard drive. Once you press commit or you press save, only then does it go into, into the hard drive. So arrays offer fast retrieval because they store uh, on RAM and not on the hard drive and are especially useful for numerical computations and algorithms. So nice part about if you want to look at arrays, if you have uh, numbers that you want to store and you can um, just use them as you go along your program, best thing is to consider using an array so that every uh, variable you don't have to query or send a SQL script to go get the stuff. That will make the user experience slowly. Just go once as a person logs in, you go one, you pick up all of those things from a hard drive, maybe a table, you bring them back, you allocate them into all those variables, you allocate them into an array so that now every time when a user continues with the experience, you can already just pull everything else from the array itself. Okay. Now let's talk about the key value pairs. What are key value pairs? So key value pairs represent a data structure that associate a unique key with a corresponding value, a unique key with a corresponding value. This sounds like a lookup table. Yes, it is a lookup table. Um, keys act as identifiers and provide a way to access and retrieve specific values from the data structure. I've often used um, this uh, in my analysis, which becomes magical at one point, because what you'll do is you would start by having a key that will um, make you connect to various tables. I know we haven't gone to an episode about joining and appending tables, but it's more like that you would have a key. You say my key is my you know, country ID number or social security number. You use your ID number as your key so that you can go to all the different tables or different arrays and use this key to unlock data that sits on the other side. So I think it's much easier to put it that way. It's easier for you to create a, a data dictionary using all those keys to say, this key will unlock everything else and this is how you um, put everything else in the form of a key. To understand this better, I think think of an instance where you use your person uh, person's name as a key to retrieve, you know, other corresponding things. It could be your address or uh, where you live, what car you drive, all of those things. Probably they're associated with the person's name. We do this naturally when we're thinking about somebody. Who say, oh Thomas, oh Thomas, the guy with the yellow shoes. Oh, the guy with the tall guy who's got whatever the case is, who wears this watch. So you can think of it that way to say, as soon as you had the word the key, which is the person's name, you could, you know, get all these other variables from different part of it. Could be from school. You say, oh, that guy that used to play rugby or used to play, play soccer. You just use the name and then you found out all the other variables from different stores um, or from different data stores, data related categories. So it's more like that. The last one that I just like us to look at is called the hash tables. So a hash table, if you ask yourself, I'm assuming you're also like myself and you're asking yourself, um, what's the, the key value um, and that, uh, what's the difference between key values and hash tables? Let's just uh, uh, say, for instance, uh, hash tables are more like they pair up with uh, key values because what happens with the hash table is you use this table to retrieve other things from the other side. So instead of, remember the other one is the key value pairs, it's just the key, it's the value inside, it pairs with another one, it unlocks. Hash table is a table full of all these things that can unlock from the other side. Whether you're storing a list table or an array, um, you know, 
you can use hash tables to unlock all of those things to say, okay, hang on a second. Um, I can, with a hash table, I can be able to store where the data is located in a hash table. So you have this hash code that you go into the hash code and it tells you where everything else is going in. Hash tables are also known as hash maps, um, are the type of data structure that provides efficient insertion, deletion, retrieval of key value pairs. So the reason why this one is quite important and underst you know, understanding this was like magical for me is because when you're thinking about a computer hard drive, I used to think that when you say format the hard drive, you're actually going in to delete the data uh, in the hard drive. But in reality is you don't go to delete the hard drive in the data um, or the data itself that sits in the hard drive. The data itself, it goes into ones and zeros. So if you think about little blocks like Excel uh, blocks, if you put a one on one block, you put a zero, you put a one, 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 zero, zero. You, you take eight of those, um, we put them together, how the ones and zeros are uh, put together, it creates, it's a code for maybe a letter A. Another one, zero, zero, what, 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 it's a another B. It's a, put the eight or the 16 together creates this, whatever the creates that. The computer, by taking those binary ones and zero, ones and zero, ones and zeros, it, based on how they are grouped together, it starts to create data, which is what we recognize as maybe numbers or pictures or pixels, depending on whatever software that you're using. But it goes all goes back to ones and zeros. So um, when you, when you store this thing on a hard drive, a hard drive is the, just the empty ocean, has all of these ones and zeros that are next to each other. There's no space in between. There's no double space for whatever. Just ones and zeros, ones and zeros, ones and zeros. So what a hash table does is it takes, it's like a directory of where do I find hash and zeros that talks to my name, d 7 So it starts to say, from a hard drive, if you start at number one, with ones and zeros position all the way to a billion position. So it says, hang on a second. The thing that talks about December, you can find them between um, 1,001 and 1,020. That location, you store it inside a hash table. So a hash table will tell you where to go into the hard drive to get the data, where to go into the hard drive to get the picture. So the, the amazing part is when you delete information, you don't actually delete the information inside the hard drive. You're deleting information inside the hash table. So if the hash table says the server is in um, number 1000 and whatever in the hard drive, all you're doing is you, you're deleting the reference into the hash table. And hard drives are designed in such a way that all the once and all the empty blocks, like I said, Excel workbook that are empty. If it's empty, it doesn't have one and zero inside, it's just blank. Um, the hash table will say those things, those spaces inside the hard drive are not allocated. So when you have a new file that comes in, we calculate and say, oh, this new file needs 17 spaces. I only got 16. Then you get an error message that says the hard drive is full. Um, if it needs 17 spaces and we got 20, the file gets stored. But you can understand that over some time, um, you don't always find uh, things that talks about my name next to each other. Maybe the first time that you use the, first, the hard drive, the first time, yes, they'll be next to each other. But when you use it the second time, depending where did you delete things, the hash table will go and say, oh, delete this position, delete that position, delete whatever that position. So hash tables are, are quite interesting. They're quite interesting because it's, it's, it's data that sometimes you can't interpret with the naked eye, but your computer might mean a lot of things. It might tell where to go, how to behave, uh, things like that. Um, and you can store quite a lot just with that hash code. Like I said, you find a software that hashes and gives you the code. You know that whole thing that says, your name, your say name, your food preference, your you know how many, how much items of finisher you have in your house, anything else that you can think about that talks about yourself, 
imagine you write it down in one word all of it doesn't matter it's gonna be seven pages and what we do is we use a software to hash it to get get a hash code for that it's gonna be a code that represents how you wrote those letters you get a hash code and then you store that hash into this thing called a hash table so a hash table creates all of that that's what a hard drive does all the time it just keeps on stirring the hash table and if you always ask yourself how is it that you bought one terabyte of data but you're only getting 900 and something worth of uh, space available it's because of the hash table the hash table also uses the same data but it doesn't you know it, it just wouldn't give you a all of the data because we need to store where you're going to store the data somewhere i know it, it makes no sense but it, it already takes some of your data but it's a it's a fun thing to to know that when people are frustrated to say oh i've lost my pictures oh i've lost my one you can just you know easily retrieve them you wouldn't have the same naming that was stored because the name the likes the whatever is stored inside the hash remember you create a hash all, all your whole life story, which is a book, you can store it inside a small little code called a hash. We hash it, it becomes a small code, we store that code. Um, the code itself needs encoding. So because we can't encode, we might not be able to know what was the, the title or what was the color of the shoe that you wanted. But we'll be able to bring back the data to say, here's the shoes, here's the pictures that you took. Here's the uh, Excel workbook that you worked on. But don't ask me to say, where's the end of the paragraph? Where's the beginning of the paragraph? The hash table knows that. So it's quite interesting for me, um, for you to know that. So yes, guys, um, I hope you find this thing quite insight insightful. Hash tables are actually getting me uh, you know, excited when I talk about it. Just talking about understanding the different types of how data gets stored data structures meant to say variables data tables list arrays and hash table i think doing so will actually help our analysis to go you know 10 times better and it will also help us to become efficient in in a way or two because you would know that oh i have hashed my data i must allow for decoding time it might take longer oh i'm using variables instead of a direct query every time it might actually be faster to get the results so you would tell your clients or your exco your menko how long it will take with your analysis thank you for tuning in once again on this episode number 11 we'll meet again in episode number 12 which is coming up just now